So dear students, we are going to start project selection and we are all we are following the same text written by Jack R. Meredith and Samuel J. Mantle. And today we are going to start project selection. We have already covered uh, introductory discussion and also project planning. So when it is a project selection, obviously we ha will have many alternatives and from many alternatives, we will select the project that will be the selected as best. And for this, we will use so many evaluation tools and techniques and we will get some ideas about that evaluation methods, tools and techniques in this discussion. Uh, today we are not going to cover any uh, quantitative model including data uh, including processing and uh, calculating output and it will be a totally a theoretical discussion today and the next class we will uh, go for numeric uh, examples so what is project selection as per the uh, text the project selection is the process of evaluating individual projects or groups of projects and then choosing to implement some set of them so that the objectives of the parent organization will be achieved so it's the same one we will have many alternatives x y z p q r so evaluation uh we will use some evaluation methods or we will go for a process of evaluating all those projects separately and then we will choose the best project if we have to choose one and if we have to choose many that cases we will go for capital rationing so that is enough uh, because in my introductory discussion, uh, I have already differentiated in between uh, NPV and PI, where to choose one project, we have used NPV, and for capital rationing, we have used profitability index. So what are the criteria for project selection models? So one, you will go for selecting uh, project selection models. That case is you need to understand the criteria that we use to select project selection models. And what are the criteria that you must consider uh, in this century, this is 21st century, the first one is your model should not be uh, selected based on emotional biasness. The model must be realistic. So you have to consider realism, the reality of the manager's decision. So you are very good in one model, but that is not up to date. So don't go for the that selection model. We will have so many alternatives and we will have uh, we will try to cover today uh, most of these selection uh, models so from these you have to choose one what is realistic then also you have to consider the capability you see that we have so many other elements or factors uh, for taking decisions or factors should be considered should be considered before you take any sort of decision so that's why the the another criteria is capability the model should be able to simulate different scenarios and optimize the decision and when we talk about different scenarios uh, from a strategic management you have idea about environmental analysis so when we talk about different scenarios that cases you have to evaluate pastel you know that so 
different scenarios means you have to evaluate political scenario economic scenarios social factors or scenarios technological factors then legal factors the rules and regulations of a country and obviously nowadays you can't take any project without considering environment and we are under as dgs sustainable development goals and we have a target to achieve sustainable development goals in 2030 where the environmental issues are crucial the third one is flexibility. We are the business people. Uh, we move behind project. So we are not a static. We are not robotic. So when we consider different scenarios with the changes of political scenario, economic, social, and others, uh, we need to change. So our model should be flexible so that we can adapt with any sort of changes, any sort of changes of the conditions then model should not be very complex. The model should be simple, usable, gettable, and understandable. And obviously, uh, it should be usable uh, uh, so that we can easily transmit the operational procedure of the model to each and every employees who are relevant to the, uh, who are related to the project. And that's how we call it should be reasonably convenient uh, the execution should be easy and obviously the members the team members uh, for them uh, the model should be easy to understand and then uh, since we live in a country where most of the cases our expenditure is more than benefits here you must remember the cost the project evaluation model should be economic so you are spending money to find out the model, to buy the model, or to use the model, and the cost that you spend for gathering and modeling uh, should be lower than the benefits. The benefits must be uh, uh, used compared to your cost. And why we are going to use model, why we want to select a best model, so that we can go for easy computerization so it the model must be easy and convenient to gather store and manipulate data in the model and these way if you consider whether the model is realistic uh it's a it's a capable to evaluate simulate different scenarios to optimize decision uh, whether it is a flexible one so that we can adjust with the changing conditions uh, it is it should be easy to use the cost should be minimum and computerization will be easy then we can say that yes that is the right selection model for us uh, we have uh, two different types of model one is called numeric and another one is non-numeric so from the name you can be able to understand that where number will be used these kind of models are known as numeric and those are related to uh, environmental factor analysis or social factors analysis that is the pastel word we have written uh, in the last slide that we can use also non-numeric model as well and two critical factors you have to remember that models do not make decisions remember so we will take decision and all models are only partial representations of the reality they are mean to reflect so you have to remember that if you rely 100 percent on the model and model will do everything for you and if there is a mistake then if you blame that your model is not working properly uh, uh, that will not be a justified opinion so be careful about that you have your own responsibility and keep in your mind that project manager, project members, they have their own responsibility. And when we talk about non-numeric models, that is the based on environmental factors and so many social factors. So among these, the first one, you have a very beautiful one that is called secret cow. So what is the meaning of secret cow? 
secret ka where the most powerful person is the project manager or project director so here project is suggested by senior and awful official in the organization and no discussion most of the cases so what's the top level opinion uh, is the final one so senior or the top level uh, managers uh, that will suggest uh, the project and then operating necessity so these kind of projects we take uh, to keep the system running so you have a use project you have a large project and you have so many uh, sub projects you have heard about that sub projects so there are some sub projects that is essential to operate uh, the main project uh, that is uh, known as operating necessity uh, uh, related competitive necessity so one you will select a model so your model must keep uh, your model must have a feature that uh, ensure the competitive advantage so project is necessary to sustain a competitive position so if you take a project and then if you become the last then why you should take a project the project is for making your organization competitive Project is for outperforming your competitors. Project is for maximizing profit or maximizing social benefits. If it is a government project, that case is government project is not for maximizing profit. Government project is for maximizing social benefits. So most of the government projects, they are not making profit. They are not for making profit. But it means not that they will make always loss. So we are not encouraging loss as well. We are encouraging the project will maximize social benefits. And if it is a private project, business project, then obviously uh, maximizing profit. And if it is a finance related project, then obviously maximizing shareholders well. And the non numeric models also related to product line extension. So you have a product line now uh, from raw materials to finished goods and you need to extend your product line and that cases you have to consider so many non numerical factors including human resource capabilities and others so when we select non numeric models uh, we need to select some non numeric models regarding product line extension so when we need to go for product line strengthens because we want to fill a gap we want to strengthen a weak link i have mentioned about human resource that if you need to train human resources uh, you need a project if you want to train your human resources you need a project and so you see that product line extension requires some non-numeric models comparative benefits model so we have several projects that considered uh, the one with the most benefit to the firm is selected. So comparative benefit model considers uh, uh, non-numeric models as well. Obviously, comparative benefit model consider numeric model as well. But similar time, we have to evaluate what environment is asking and what is happening uh, around the world, what is happening around the country. And now the current situation, you know better. So we have to consider current situation as well. So non-numeric models help us to understand what environment is asking. Numeric models, uh, uh, you, you can't change uh, instantly or you can change immediately. But non-numeric model, models consider environmental factors. And if any change of the environmental factors, uh, you can immediately react uh, through non-numeric models in case of numeric models you need data again you have to process again so sometimes uh, if numeric model is very much automated uh, then it is all right but if it's not too much automated that cases uh, for immediate change immediate reactions or change of your decision you need to take support of non-numeric models uh, numeric models are very much known to everybody because you are a uh, finance student and even the business student economics student uh, they're very much uh, familiar with numeric models 
One is we know payback period and average rate of return. Uh, in case of payback period, how many days, how many months or years uh, will it take to get back your money? And then average a rate of return, you, you know, the calculation that how much money you invested average and how much average profit you have. So the ratio is average rate of return. And we consider time below money. So if you don't consider time below money, then you will not get the right uh, data and you can't take the right decision because five years later, the earnings from the project and today's investment, if you compare today's investment with five years uh, later uh, revenue, uh, it will not be wise. So you have to convert it five years later, your revenue to the present value. And then you have to consider, you have to compare that what's the present value of cash inflows and then what's the present value of cash outflows. So that's why we will use discounted cash flow method. We will calculate IRR. IRR helps us to understand that uh, the rate at what uh, present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows become equal. So IRR is that rate where NPV equals to zero. And for capital rationing, we use profitability index. And besides these, we also calculate benefit cost ratio. So what's the benefits and what's the cost, the ratio. Uh, sometimes we use uh, weighted factor scoring models, weighted factor scoring models. Uh, you give the scores to the answer of so many questions and that is score will help you to take right decision. Uh, our students, they use Likert scale. So you see that when you say uh, strongly agreed, agreed, neither agreed nor disagreed, then disagreed, strongly disagreed. So you put point here and these points are basically scores and these scores will give you a result to take right decision. So there are some examples of scoring models. Uh, one is called unweighted zero one factor model. Another one is unweighted factor scoring model, weighted factor scoring model, constrained weighted factor scoring model, and goal programming with multiple objectives. And these are important as a short notch. So you uh, should have uh, a, 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 at least minimum uh, knowledge about all this uh, model and one day I will cover uh, these as short notes or I will elaborate all this. And when we are we're talking about project selection, so project selection must consider risk and uncertainty. And you know, uh, risk is measurable, uncertainty is not. But the explanation here is much more uh, uh, beautiful. Uh, much more authentic than the way we define risk and uncertainty. You see that risk, when the decision maker knows the probability of every state of nature and thus every outcome. So what is risk? When decision maker knows the probability of every state of nature, recession hutte pare kemon. Normal thakte pare economy kemon. Boom ki adu hote pare. No, it a vilu normal way jete pare. So, or it a above recession hote pare. EJ, we say that probability of every state, whether we will have a chance of recession, we have a chance of uh, continue the normal economy, our economy will be a boom one, vilu normal, vilu recession, or above recession. So when the decision maker knows the probability of every state of nature and thus every outcome, that is risk. So when we define uncertainty, so decision maker has information that information, you have information, you have information that uh, this month is uh, uh, declaring uh, that uh, winter is coming. So you have the information. But that is not complete information and therefore cannot determine the expected value of each alternative. And that is uncertainty. 
So project management students, they have to consider risk and uncertainty as well. Well, what kind of information you need? Uh, you need accounting data, because when we talk about numeric models, we need accounting data, we need inflows, we need outflows, and under different categories, under different heads and subheads. And besides these, what we are going to measure, we need to go for subjective measurements and objective measurements, quantitative and qualitative, reliable measurements, unreliable measurements, valid or invalid. And besides these, you need to consider about technological shock as well. Uh, decisions rules under profitability models you have a table uh, to understand these table uh, you must have ideas or you must have ideas about the leveraging of all this uh, you know that uh, npv is a net present value vcr benefit cost ratio irr internal rate of return payback period uh, uh, pop payout period cop cut off point so chosen in a way that selected projects exactly adjust the constraint input the cob differs according to the criteria used in the table so it, it depends on the criteria so your cut off point is not always the same one i discount rate selected or opportunity cost of capital SER shadow exchange rate, YRS number of years selected, J number of projects, DRC domestic resource cost. So all this uh, elaboration you must keep in your mind, and then you can understand the table. So what's the general rule? And PV should be greater than zero. IRR should be greater than small i, VCR should be greater than one, PV should less than years, ARR should be greater than i, DRC should be less than SCR, or DRC should be less than one. So if you forget DRC, then you can find it domestic resource cost. So this table will help you to understand your decision-making criteria. So you see that this table is a elaboration of our decision-making criteria because we are using uh, some more criteria here. And you know the COP means cutoff point. So we have four columns and uh, you can uh, check this whenever uh, you will calculate NBV, IRR, BCR, ARR, and DRC. So when we will go for writing a project proposal, we must keep uh, some points in our mind, but that is not the final. Uh, when we will write project proposal, we must consider more points. And it's a summarized uh, version of the points. So uh, this is a guideline, but you, you should not uh, rely on this you should not rely only on this uh you have to consider more points uh, that we will cover uh, when we will write project proposal so the first uh, first you must keep in your mind that which projects should be bid on so it is a project uh based on um uh, based on redesigning redesigning of our lab or it is a building renovation or it is a broadband connection or it's solar panel installation so which project should be bid in uh keep it in your mind and how should the proposal preparation process be organized and stuff you have to find out the answer that preparation proposal preparation process be organized so you have to maintain a sequence that which one will come first and then second and start. So who will play the role of the key person 
who will collect data, who will process data, who will write, who will summarize, who will edit. So there are many questions that you have to find out the answer. Then how much should be spent on preparing proposals for bids? Uh, so that you must keep in your mind. Then how should the bid prices be set? Because when it is a business project, so you need to set bid price with your profit as well. And if it, if it is a government project, then then project then profit is not uh, mandatory. But when it is a business uh, project, that case is uh, when you determine your bid prices. So you must keep in your mind your profit. And what is the bidding strategy? Because you have to win the bid if you really uh, want to work with the project. And keep it in your mind: is it ethical? I'm not explaining this point too much. In Bangladesh, many cases it's ethical. Many cases. It's political. So what are the contents that you keep in your mind? Obviously, there should have a summary, then cover letter. Uh, every project must have a cover letter. And if it is still online, then you have an email. Then nature of the technical problem, why you are going to uh, beat uh, for these projects. Uh, what's the background study? Uh, what will be the uh, plan for implementation of projects? a plan for logistic support and administration of the project, a description of group proposing to do the work, any relevant past experience that can be applied, and then make the summary of everything. That is primary selection criteria. You remember that uh, uh, the word we have already covered. So I'm not going to make the summary at this moment because uh, this is the summary of what I have already discussed. Uh, but uh, I want to draw your attention uh, about some points of this slide uh, in case of project selection. Uh, you keep in your mind that uh, what are the production factors, so you can check this, then marketing factors, then financial factors, personal factors, administrative and miscellaneous factors. And sometimes uh, we ask our students in the exam uh, that what production factors you will consider uh at the time of selecting a project what personal factors what administrative and miscellaneous factors what marketing factors what financial factors you uh will consider uh for selecting a project so these way this table is important for our students so i'm requesting you i'm not wasting your time or uh, even wasting our time checking all these points uh i will provide this to you so uh you should check uh, some points from all this. Uh, you should not remember all these points. Keep in your mind four, four points or six, seven points. And that is enough for uh, understanding project evaluation factors. So at this moment, that is enough from my side.